So welcome everyone to the very fine release UX bi-weekly meeting. It sounds like we have a, um, some items in agenda, so I suggest let's uh, deep dive into that. Um, yeah, I will give it over to Hayana that's typing. <laughs> yes, um, uh, let me finish my line of thought here. Yeah, just this kind of like a heads up. My, I don't see Dimitri is uh, out of office, uh, so perhaps we can discuss this further asynchronously. Um, but I had uh, a conversation with Jackie this week, earlier this week, um, about environment variables and this whole discussion, you know, in uh, wanting to standardize things and having a UX DRI. So um, we discussed that it makes sense that verify, and I think this is also aligned with PMs, but I'm not sure if it was discussed from a UX point of view, so that verify on CI would own environment variables since release management is focused on secrets management. And although we treat it as a single thing in GitLab, but they are very, like they have two different focuses. Um, so maybe I'll just add a, an action item here uh, for myself to bring more context from, um, from Jackie uh, so that we can have the discussions. So that's why I was typing, I was trying to find <laughs> the information I wanted to share. Yeah. Um, it's actually a good topic. Um, I think like, um, I, sorry, I totally forgot. Where did we discuss that yesterday? Um, Mike, I think we discussed yesterday variables in the CD, uh, sorry, in the progressive delivery PMUX with Oriti yesterday. We've been talking about the overlap right there. Yep. Um, and actually, uh, this is something that maybe I should fall, uh, I should share later. Um, I had a great discussion with Ian today in regards to like the retrospective on the Think Big, uh, cross stage Think Big session. And we thought that variables is the perfect uh, discussion to have as a Think Big session. Um, of course, doing some of the adjustments based on the last session uh, to make sure that we have it a bit more effective and a bit more straight to the point. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know, Hayana, how do you want to approach that? Um, um, I'm not sure yet. Um, I feel like I need to get more, more context from, from Jackie, uh, but from what I understood, uh, and also based on the research that she's, uh, um, that she's uh, conducting, all the interviews, and the latest discussions with, uh, was it Kenny? Anyways, one of those guys. Um, was that the discussion was about making the split and yeah, not sure. So, sorry, I don't have an answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm just typing in, uh, along. Um, yeah, so that uh, uh, I, th I think like already is planning some work around there or it's already actually uh, like started and I think it's very important for us to align. Um, so Hayana, maybe whenever you have a little bit more information, what's, uh, what's the call from Jackie is, um, I think maybe we should even like move the discussion a little bit sooner so we can all meet and align at least so we are not crossing each other path passes and maybe we can be helpful to each other there and, and uh, work together um, on that. Yeah, because I think with the AWS, the point AWS research that I just finished talking to people about, one of the questions was around environmental environment variables and secrets management. So I was asking them like, how do they use environment variables? Which environment variables do they use or define? And then there was a question around secrets. So like how are secrets passed? How are secrets managed? So there's data on both of those, especially in terms of AWS, um, in those sessions. So I'm not, I don't know enough about the difference between the two. Like I know what secrets are and I get what environment variables are, but I don't know how they either are different or work together. Um, so I don't understand the split, splitting them. Um, it seems to me like everybody needs them, but that's my ignorance talking. So let me know how I can help how I can share that information. Okay. And I just added here uh, some of the, the, the mentions from Jackie. She's saying that because the CI team, and I think it's also more from an engineering point of view, that we don't have the capacity to work on uh, uh, 
uh, CI variables right now. So we can collaborate with the design if that's the case, but then we don't execute anything. So I, to me, the concern is uh, if we still treat as one single thing across, uh, uh, across the board, we still need to define a DRI. And if, for example, Verify is executing everything, I think it makes sense that the DRI is the, you know, the, the designer um, on Verify assigned to this. And then we yeah. cross collaborate. With, uh, okay, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Juan, over to you. Uh, sure. So I put some stuff, a couple of things. I think I have the two next things. So, uh, yeah, for process, uh, I just wanted to kind of like ask around. I mean, I think we have been like uh, obsessively talking about this topic a lot, but I, 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 I wanted to make sure that we we're still aligned and like finding uh, areas where we can improve on this process. So I, I wanted to talk about the category maturity scorecard process because I know Hayana is going through it and I'm going through it. And from my discussions with Nadia, uh, with Lori uh, and with other people, I have noticed that, I don't know, your mileage, your mileage may vary when you're doing this. And my initial perception, perception is that if the category is small, is small, like the one that I'm doing, which is accessibility, which basically has just like one job to be done, uh, then the process is gonna be super simple. It's not daunting, I'm not stressed with it, you know? But it feels that once you start getting into a larger category, it can become very daunting, right? Because there's gonna be a lot of job to be done, a lot of testing scenarios. Uh, so I, didn't have specific questions for this. I just wanted to see how people are perceiving it uh, and perhaps if, to see if that uh, perception that I just shared is the correct one. And if that's the case, how can we, yeah, how can we like strategize around that, right? Because I feel that there's, uh, especially when we, when we start doing like very large categories, I think that this still needs to scale. And like, if it doesn't scale, then it becomes more like a drag for like our work. And I wanna be sure that we are giving that feedback back to Lori and to uh, anyone who is involved in the process of, uh, you know, improving the process of the category maturity scorecard. So I don't know. Uh, I saw Hayana wanted to type something and she stopped. Maybe you wanna verbalize what you wanna say. Yeah, I think for my case it's a bit different because um, I'm already using like user insights that we collected over the couple of you know last few months to to support the change in uh, the maturity for everybody's orchestration, and that for us we have one main job to be done and okay. one scenario that we're focusing. So it's a bit different in the sense of yes, we have a lot. We probably have a lot of other scenarios and jobs to be done that relate to the maturity scorecard. And um, actually can, uh, I'm gonna find here a sheet with a couple of jobs to be done that we have listed, but we are, yeah, I'm not focusing on anything other than the main job to be done now. Got it. Um, um, so part of the category maturity scorecard process will change. I've got an update in the UX team weekly next week, but I'll tell you guys. Um, so basically, I did interviews with designers and product managers, as you guys know. And what I learned was that exactly what Juan is saying. Like, if you have something very small, it's a very easy process to go through. If you have something very large, it's very daunting. And it's hard to scale it up to some, scale what we have now up to something very large. So... I proposed a couple of changes to the process and Sarah and I are going to work on how to deliver those changes. I'm not really sure. I'm going to meet with Sarah on Monday to talk about it. But basically, um, we're moving away from the qualitative piece of it, piece of that, of the category maturity scorecard process and more quantitative, so more numbers driven 
So less, less like a usability test, more like a summative or benchmark process where you still give the person a scenario or a couple of tasks that align with your job to be done, but you don't have to ask them any questions. They don't talk. They go through the process. You capture how long it takes them. You ask them these two questions that are from the UX UM light uh, scorecard. And it's just two questions and they're actually calibrated to the MPS and to the SUS score. So you don't have to ask those questions. You just ask these two as well as like, you know, any errors that they made and did they succeed or did they fail at the task? So that's kind of how that process is going to change. So no more counting clicks, no more any, anything like that. Um, but the more important part of that is that this process isn't supposed to be done just because, oh, it's Tuesday, we need to do this. Or my PM told me I had to do this. Or my PM's manager told them they have to do this. And then they told me that we have to do this. This process needs to be done only after you complete that UCD process with that feature or function. So that means like all the stuff that you guys are doing, the usability testing, the problem validation, the user interviews, that is supposed to have already been done before you do the category maturity scorecard. That hey. is not happening, not in this group, but that is not happening everywhere. The, some people are only using this as the first time they are getting user feedback on a feature. And that is not what this is intended for. That's, that's, that's a great point because I, uh, I have been like having like a little bit of like uh, confusion when people bring up that usability testing perspective of it. Mm -hmm. it's supposed, I guess that we're supposed to be usability testing these. Uh, I, I can't tell you that I haven't usability tested things. What I have done though is uh, probably talk with customers on like solution validation and like that kind of like drives the fact that like this is somehow usable but I have never went like I never went back and usability test those designs right so yeah uh, so and I don't I don't remember that I ever saw like that that was a requirement ever but it makes perfect sense right I mean like yeah. I'm not, it's not part of what we should do no, no, it's not you. It's, it is, it's, it's, I've read through the process and I've talked with Jeff. I've talked with the research team. I've talked to Christy. I've talked to the leadership team. I think there were just some assumptions made in how the process was written up that this would only be used after a feature or function went through that UCD process. But because we didn't explicitly say it and there was that OKR that everybody had that put pressure on them to feel like they needed to do the scorecard before the quarter was up. I think that was kind of a perfect storm. Right. So my advice, if we can get James to back away from wanting to get this done is to do a quick five user test with your, your solution, run it through usability testing. You really need to do that because this new process right. is not going to have any qualitative data. You're not going to get a why. You're right. actually going to actively encourage them not to talk right. during the task because if you're going to take time on task measurement, they can't talk. Right. So that's a, that's a big change from how we initially viewed this, this measurement. So I'm, I'm going to tell everybody again on Tuesday, you'll, you'll hear it again, um, to do that UCD process, do those usability tests because you need to get to the point where you've got it down like you've refined the feature function you've to your best knowledge and your product manager's best knowledge you have reduced any errors that could come up any confusion that could be there it is in the best state you can get it in now let's go see how it performs in this summative evaluation now the other part of this and i learned this recently that is missing is that product management needs to tell us how they want to consume these measures that we're gonna give them. I don't know how they're going to use this data. I don't think they've had time to think about it either. Um, but like if we go through all this process and we get these measurements and this data, how are they going to take that and then apply that to the category maturity? Because as I understand it, we're not defining maturity for them. We're only gathering this data and telling them how it performs 
performed. And as we get more data, we can tell it how it performed over time. Right. Right. It's their call to say, how are they going to apply that to the maturity of the category? So there's, there's also that other half there. And, and my message to Christy and the leadership team is go, go find whoever is in the product team we need to talk to and let's have a conversation about that. Because what I want to do is I want to present this new way and then tell them what they will get out of it and then work with them to figure out how they will consume it. So we can make sure our process matches with what they need to make a good judgment. So, so, so just to be clear, the new process will be, you give the scenario to the customer, they do it. And then we give them like a couple of questions where we ask them like, I, I don't know like the exact questions, but like, it could be like, for like an NPS type of question from one to 10, how yeah. I to recommend these uh, it's, features? Yeah, for- it's like, um, yeah, it's like uh, I felt successful on a scale okay. of one to seven. Like I, yeah, it's, it's just two questions around that, like success okay. and Got it. You know, feeling good about it. Yeah, yeah. And then at the same time, you know, like you are watching for errors, you're counting errors, you're counting how long it took them and you're seeing, you're noting if they succeeded or failed at the task. Right. So it's very much more stripped down. Um, one of Valerie's concerns was this current process, in her perspective, takes like three months. This should not take three months. Right. This is a summative right. evaluation. And I actually proposed to change the name to be summative evaluation because that's really what it is intended to be, which is why we need to be doing that usability testing before we get there. Uh, okay. No, that makes perfect sense. There's one more thought that mm-hmm. I have about these, but if that's going to be the case, isn't it possible that we can do this asynchronously if we instrument some type yes. of- Yes, so that's the other part that I'm trying to figure out how we can make happen. Because <laughs> you need the video, right? Because you're gonna right. need to watch them. Right. And I've talked to Ian about his proposal to use the product concept testing feature in Qualtrics along with a pre like a pre-set up zoom room that automatically records when somebody goes in it but he hasn't done it yet that's his that's his proposal because i thought he had done it he hadn't right so i need to figure out or somebody needs to figure out if that will work because we don't have usertesting.com or something like that we have qualtrics so that it, it is but you are right we could technically do it that way if we can figure out the best way to get the tool to do it there are tools. Uh, I actually oh, showed yeah. in Nadia uh, on, like last week, last this week. Uh, look back is one. I don't uh-huh. know like, if it comes to like the problem is if we have budget for that or not. I don't know what's the deal with that, but yeah. there's definitely uh, like ways to instrument these and make it more scientific. And mm-hmm. well, like here's a link. Do this task. Complete this task. Answer these two questions. Mm-hmm. then we can actually scale these to more than five. We can potentially do like 20, you know, and like we could have like a better measurement of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause technically you would want to, if you have more than one segment that you've designed for, you would want right. to do like five or six people per segment. So that's where we're going to go. We're not there yet. Um, but yeah, no, I totally believe I totally get you on. There are tools out there. I don't know what the budget is. I feel like that, ship has sailed because <laughs> we yeah. we started our new new year but i don't don't uh, quote me on that because right. i'm not sure i think if we can prove that we really need another tool and that qualtrics won't do what we need it to do we'll most likely be able to right. to get it but at the at the least of it you could pair this summative evaluation with another session with somebody so still right. schedule like 30 minutes have them do this for 10 of those minutes and then have another conversation about a different topic altogether. So you wouldn't, you don't also have to think of this as one effort. You could combine it with others too. Right. Okay. Oh no, I think that's a great update, Lori. Thank, thank you for sharing all these. I think that makes it, at least for me, it makes me more hopeful about Go ahead. <laughs> the process. So yeah, it's good. Thank you for sharing that.
100% agree with you, Juan, and thanks for bringing the topic in the beginning. Uh, Laura, I think that was like great to share some of the insights and some of these like big major, well, uh, changes that are coming in. Hopefully this will allow us to have a more lightweight process. It definitely sounds like that. Uh, so thanks a lot, Lori, for an update on that side. Uh, yeah, uh, we will be sharing more details, I guess, as we go. Uh, but for now, Lori, the message is that, uh, for example, Hayana is in the middle of the process right now, so we mm -hmm. should be just keeping with running that as we planned, right? Yes, yes, so that's what Christy's direction is. So if you started the process, she would like you to go ahead and finish because, again, she's using this word pilot. So we're all piloting the original process right now. We haven't changed it yet. So she doesn't want to disrupt anything that you guys are going through, but just know that it may not be as smooth as we want it to be because it was a pilot. So, and, and for you one, if we can get James to put that on the back burner for a minute, and let you do some usability testing, I think that would be the best part. I don't think he's, yours. I think he, he wants these very bad. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. And I'm happy to have the conversation with you guys too about yeah. it. Okay. For sure. Uh, I, I just took a note that I'm going to talk with him about it. So, um, okay. yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Lauren, for the update updates again. Um, Juan, next uh, topic is yours. Sure. Uh, okay. So just, this is just like small notes, but I saw that we had, we, we started the product area DRI document first. It had a table. Now like the table is gone because I think that was confusing now that we have like all the areas uh, added. I think I would just wanted to make sure what are the next steps. So should we start like drafting our names next to the listed areas? Should we, I don't know. I kind of like wanted, I don't want this to go stale. So like, uh, I just. Uh, I'm on it, uh, Juan, so it, it will not go stale. And thanks for uh, bringing this up and following up on that. So I removed the table there because uh, I have put it in the beginning to just kick the discussion off. But then when I understood, uh, when like I've seen the, su the suggestion from Dimitri, like uh, the level of the granularity yeah. uh, of the functionality that we want to highlight, I was thinking, okay, table is not going to help. And just to avoid the confusion, I removed it. Uh, okay. So sorry if that caused uh, some thoughts. Um, and... Um, this is a great question. Um, I was discussing this with Christy saying that, hey, we have this challenge right now when we are trying to figure out how do we want to um, talk about those uh, that work that's happened in other stages and we may like walk across each other, uh, you know, ways. Um, and yeah, hey, this is a pretty tough, well, a challenge that I feel we need, again, I, what we have uh, summarized with Christy, that we need to bring this up more on the cross level. And I have this topic for the next UX leadership team, just to see a uh, team meeting, just to see if anybody was doing something around that, anybody has other better ideas. Um, and let me be honest with you here. I'm not sure if like for us making that DRI list in the issue would be very helpful. Um, again, I would like, yeah, um, I appreciate the help there. And like, I think we should just try to get it started. Uh, thanks for everyone who have put in the insights there. But just FYI, I'm searching for a better way to solve the challenge. And um, yeah, I think we need to work here again across stage. This is why I'm trying to involve the leader from uh, leaders from other stages uh, and group stages to see what can we do together around that? Oh. If anyone has any input or ideas, let's share them right now. Uh, I don't have, I think that there's definitely a challenge there. So uh, I don't know, I'll Google stuff and see if I find something interesting uh, in a way that we can solve. It's impossible that we're the first people who are like facing this problem. Like there's like thousands of, of organizations that are like GitLab where like probably they have like uh, cross group uh, dependencies and they have to define those DRIs. So I must imagine that there must be like something out there that already solves it somehow, like some framework or something. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, yeah. I'm, I'm good at Googling, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, me usually too, but if, yeah. Um, as I said, like, you know, I was, uh, I'm trying to look at the bigger organizations who are having similar, like huge, uh, 
uh, UX teams that need to be aligned. Um, cannot really spot anything yet, but I'm on that. Uh, and like, yeah, um, I will be keeping you posted. If anyone wants to help me here or have any other ideas, super uh, open for like collaboration and brainstorm together. Uh, but yeah, otherwise I will be keeping you posted. My yeah. next uh, point is to talk about this next Monday with uh, other UX managers and see what they think. Sounds and maybe good. they have some better ideas. Yeah. Uh, let's come back to this discussion for sure a little bit later when I have a little bit more news. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks. for the update. Okay, next one is mine. I already touched uh, touched upon this a little bit. Uh, today in the morning, we had a really nice kind of like follow up with Ian about how the cross stage thing big discussion went. I think that was last week. Um, he shared with me the insights from another session that a package team had involving uh, some of the folks from the secure team. Um, because they have some dependencies on each other. And um, uh, let me actually share that issue with you. Uh, just bear with me real quick. This one, because the feedback was really great there. Um, uh, here. And, you know, I was asking him, like, um, there was another, like, cross a stage session that they performed. And I was asking Ian, like, what do you think was the difference between ours? Because I honestly, I didn't feel like it, that session was very successful that we had, but the one that they had with secure together, it seems like it went smoother. It was much more positive comments there in the uh, issue. So we aligned on them a lot. Um, and uh, we kind of like did a quick brainstorming together uh, on how we can solve some of those feedbacks that we received and some of those concerns that we have heard and we have felt ourselves. A lot of, uh, of that like brainstorm dump in this mural board. Sorry, couldn't use mural because it's really like was crashing on me every time. Uh, I will make sure that I uh, extract these insights and add this to the retrospective issue so we can uh, have it in GitLab. And uh, yeah, uh, we will be improving the uh, administration, I guess, and the setup and the guidance for the next cross thing. And as I said, Kayan, I think um, a variable is gonna, probably going to be perfect scenario for that. And I think one of the things that we need to make sure is that we need to maybe highlight the people that we need for that discussion and let everyone else just like or drop off or come in and listen if they want to. So just to like narrow this down and make sure that people are really interested to participate. Yeah, makes sense. It's like what we're doing for release management. You're welcome to join, but we, are, we don't officially invite everyone. We have the DRIs, for example, only the seniors, uh, backend uh, and front-end engineers that are currently, you know, uh, uh, effectively working on the think big uh, uh, issues are uh, stable counterparts, let's say. Yeah, if you wanna join, you can. Uh, but I think that also creates more accountability. And for the cross stage think big, I, my, I just want to highlight the point from uh, the last retrospective that I think we should prepare more async or prior because it's a bit frustrating uh, when you have a room full with product managers, no one has anything to share. It's like you know, we are the, it's awesome that we are doing this to be more design led, um, but we need their involvement as well. So I think, uh, I think it's a good point to, you know, just have the more focus on specific, uh, specific topics. Yeah, on spot, Hayana, that's one of the a topic, one of the improvements we are also making sure that we give people a little bit more like homework preparation because the success point was for the session that Ian uh, ran uh, that they have prepared like some video walkthroughs that people had to watch before joining. So that's a good point that we also um, uh, added to the, uh, to the board. And I sent you an invite directly, Hayana, so you should be hopefully... And, uh, also see the, the, the because I also discussed this with uh, with Jackie last week after the, the think big and she created this merge request I think you're you added to it but this merge request to identify cross op sections initiatives and link them on the pages uh, of different uh, of different product areas so this one here Thank uh, you. so for example when we are reading package or verify there is a link to a release uh, documentation page or the release vision where we talk how those things overlap. So uh, from a PM point of view, I think Jackie is also, I'm not sure, I haven't read, sorry, the, the issue 
um, by Ian yet, but mm -hmm. I, Jackie already proactively wants to start identifying those things because she's a vote getter. <laughs> so she wants great. people to provide this information. This is great. And actually one of the things that we also discussed with Ian, that it would be nice to have a place, uh, like it was just like brainstorming from us, but we thought maybe we could have a place where people who are thinking that they have a dependency or wanted to check if they have a dependency, if they could go to this place and check it, okay, if there is anything happening on variables or merge requests or whatever, uh, that they can um, check in and maybe like even, um, uh, how do you say, nominate a discussion for one of these cross thing sessions. Um, so it's in that, uh, is, this, is, uh, this idea is in, um, among this Miro um, outcomes there and I will have a look into this MR from Jackie uh, to see if this is something that can help us with that idea. So thanks for sharing that. I'll have a look later. Okay, cool. Well, the next uh, section is uh, user research. I don't know if we want to address anything there. We don't have any notes. Okay, Hayana, then over to you. Yeah, that's a tough one. I want to suggest moving this call to a different day of the week because for us it's like Friday in the day. I don't think it's possible to move any earlier because well, our folks on the other side of the world, but it's difficult to find something like on a Tuesday where everyone is free. Um, so I don't know, do people have a strong feelings about keeping this call on a Friday or should we look at a different day of the week? How do you folks feel about this topic? I'm okay with moving it. Uh, I mean, like, as long as long it's something that works for everyone. My Thursday, it's not good. Usually I have, like, testing calls during the morning. Uh, Wednesday, we already have, uh, like, UX showcases, but those are monthly i don't i don't remember by weekly whatever so we could like actually take that slot right and yeah yeah basically uh every other week will be ux showcase and every other week uh skip week will be us yeah that's the only day that'll work for me i'm going to all y'all's meetings and now i'm picking up enablement too so and looking at the regular calendars, I think it's just impossible to find me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Did you check the slot of this of the UX showcase, uh, Hayana? Are you looking there right uh, now? UX showcase. Uh, Every other Wednesday. Well, I can check that option after the call if if uh, we don't want to lose time on that, and I'll let you know if that works. If that yeah, works. Basically, it will be. Uh, our, our meeting, UX showcase, our meeting, UX showcase. It's basically mm -hmm. in that slot uh, consistently for UX related. Stuff. Yeah, I'm just not sure if people have other meetings scheduled. For example, um, Lori, in one of the Wednesdays, well, it's actually instead of the UX showcase, we have the capstone project um, catch up. Uh, if uh, I think it will work if people do not schedule other sessions already in that spot, uh, so I can yeah. move it and then we can try to move other sessions if everyone is up to that. Yeah, That's and good. I can move the cap show, capstone one too, but by the middle of May that'll be over. She's got to present her stuff like May 11th, so that'll that'll drop off. Correct. Yeah, but it's pretty consistent. Like Wednesday when there is no UX showcase, there is this time slot here. Yeah. That Promising. Okay. I can try moving it, moving it there. If that will suddenly not work for anyone, just give me a sign and we'll try to find another day or move it back. Cool. Thank you. Hannah, you're next. Yeah, we added this item here before the whole Corona thing. <laughs> uh, Nadia and I were talking about like uh, swapping books and uh, just book recommendations. And um, my idea was really more something um, for us here on this side of the world, especially now that, well, not now because Dimitri is not in the country, but since we are uh, in the Netherlands, we could swap physical books. So instead of doing the digital thing, um, or as a group, um, spend some time like 
doing something what, like what the folks are doing for the UX book club, uh, for example, areas related to uh, auto DevOps, CI, CD, if it's not too much or too boring or anything different. Anyways, it was just a really a brain fart. Um, and I'm not sure if any of you are already part of the, the book club. But maybe not. Did you want to take over because you added to this stuff? Yeah, I just uh, added it there also like to see how that overlaps. I have to be honest that uh, I love the idea of the UX book club that uh, Holly and I think Nadia have started. I have to be really open here and honest. I never managed to join one of those. I think this is like the same situation as with the UX Hangouts. You always like put those as a lower priority. However, I think maybe this should not be a lower priority because this is like your way to get some new knowledge and, you know, and uh, ideas and educate yourself a little bit. I love that idea. So uh, yeah. yeah, maybe, yeah. Or maybe not like a books club, book club or I don't know, we just spend some time sharing something interesting, like a UX best practice or something that, I don't know, video uh, um, class we did, whatever, something in that sense. Um, every now and then, I don't think it needs to be something we do every week. This is but something that Juan was also, uh, remember Juan, we talked with you also about that. You've been suggesting similar thing. Yeah, I remember, uh, but I mean, I'm open to anything. Like I basically, the only problem is what you just said. Like sometimes you end up like deprioritizing these against like other stuff that you have. Uh, what we have talked with the Juan about that was uh, if we have the design review sessions like finishing too early or we don't have much to discuss there, we could uh like share some of the insights you know like hey who have read anything interesting or who have watched something interesting or attended a conference that was nice kind of like sharing some best practices or knowledge sharing session instead i yeah i now i remember what i said it's a uh, in past teams that i have worked on we usually have like this type of meeting with an agenda and at the bottom someone will put like articles that they read uh so if there's time at the end of the meeting, we can like, we can be like, oh, check this article and they give like a small summary. It doesn't need to be UX either. You know, sometimes people will just put like memes and stuff, you know, so uh, this is just like a fun part of the meeting at the end. And it's only if we happen to have the time, which I guess we do. I mean, right now we are almost done and we have 10 minutes left, you know, so like that will be the perfect space for like sharing those things yeah i think that would be cool like i like the part of uh just adding a couple of links or some things that we found interesting i remember once um christy mentioned some things about i don't know ux uh podcasts or whatever just yeah. some things in the, the agenda of the ux uh, call um, and I, I thought oh, that was super, I, I, not, no, it wasn't that, it was uh, newsletters, like design newsletters. So I think I miss this type of uh, sharing, you know, between the group. And I think that I personally feel like with the design group is just too big <laughs> to have this, uh, this type of discussions. And then it's like this one minute where I'm reading something and saying, hey, uh, check out this link. And then we don't talk about it. So maybe we can try it out. Something similar. I like that. And just like brainstorming on your thoughts on top. Um, do we have like a place where we dump all of this information just to not to lose it? Like for example, a Slack channel, we would like say go and say, hey, I read this book or I read that article. And then maybe we could just use that as a like a historical yeah. library during these times when we'll have some time left. I think I it can be in the agenda here. It's like we have a section at the end, like, I don't know, interest, interesting links, whatever, knowledge sharing. And then you can always refer and go back and, and find mm -hmm. it. I like that. Let's do it. I mean, yeah, I could uh, add a section to this document so we can keep this as a library. And also like if someone feels like, hey, I suddenly have some time on the quarantine to go over uh, some additional information, that would be a nice place to go and have a look. And then we can also use it as a discussion whenever like the meeting is shorter or whenever, yeah, whenever we just want to talk. 
I like that. I will um, I'll add that part. I'll add that section somewhere in this document. Cool. Um, all right. Well, um, I know we are actually at the official end of the uh, time uh, end of the time for this session, but. Mm, something that I wanted just maybe to check in with everyone on, uh, this is like we, it's April 17 and it's coming close to the 19th every month that we have a, a milestone retrospectives uh, discussions. Um, and I just wanted to maybe uh, give a shout out if there is any issues or any challenges uh, you faced in your stage group or general UX department that you want to highlight and talk about and give it some attention? I probably have some, but not like off the top of my mind right now. So are we planning to have an issue for this, like a retro issue? Or we can put those asynchronously. So yeah, uh, I feel like we had the discussion in the past, and uh, why don't we? I would encourage everyone to use the milestone retrospectives because honestly, I don't see much activity from our team, and I know that we talked in the past that it's uh, the the timing of those milestone retrospectives issues is sometimes weird, like you like uh, the tenth one coming up when we are almost done with the next one. Uh, but it shouldn't be really uh, the big of a difference when, when we place the comment. It's just make, to make sure that we are highlighting the challenge or the issue and that we talk about that. Uh, I don't know what, what opinions do, does everyone else have on that perspective. Um, I agree. I tend to leave it for last minute. <laughs> in the group retrospective. So in this case, for example, I haven't wrote anything yet, but maybe we can try as well, like since we have the time and of wrapping up the, the calls, because we do this bi-weekly, right? And say, okay, yeah. uh, what did we learn? What could have we done better? And then, yeah, later on, you can add the same information yourself to the, to the UX uh, call. Um, because I feel like to me, it, this is really something that I have to stop and look back at everything I did. Um, yeah, I think the same. Yeah, that's why I keep track of <laughs> what I'm doing every week because, for example, now I'm working on 13.1. I don't remember anything about 12.10, <laughs> you know? It's a, it's a completely different time frame. So it's, it's yeah. quite weird. Yeah, I think that now that I think about it, there's like things that I can, off the top of my mind, that I can say like things that went well, I think that we, as a team, we did a better job in this milestone to be all like in sync, you know, like on sync, like trying to like be sure that we are uh, doing things that cross pollinate and that we're not affecting our uh, like other groups in the in the section, you know. So uh, I also think also another thing that I think went well was the transition between what we had before uh, when we were like uh, CICD and now that we are like ops slash verify. I I mean, that's kudos to you, Nadia and Justin, that I felt that that was very smooth. You know, I don't, I don't feel that, I mean, yeah, we had some moves from like people and everything, but uh, I think I got it very, like, you guys communicated that very efficiently and now I understand why we did it and like, yeah, it, and didn't feel disruptions on that. Uh, so those were, were like the went well uh, that I have to share. Thanks, that's, that's good to hear. I One from, this is like general, right? It's not just uh, us as in, uh, yeah, I think for me, what we can improve, like when I look back at the, the category maturity, the conversations, it's, uh, it's a bit bumpy. Um, but I know, even though I know that it's, it's a bit of a weird process, <laughs> uh, I know that I can count on Laurie and all the feedback and help that Laurie has provided um, to give us 
not just more context, but also um, provide a, a North Star for what we're doing uh, that has been super helpful. And I think that would be completely lost, Laurie, without you. Oh, <laughs> so, oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, that was a good thing. Um, but I think in general, moving forward, yeah, when I look at this OPR is that it's a bit frustrating to start something knowing that I cannot fully finish it. So, um, and I have to write this later on in the team, uh, a milestone retrospective that, yeah, I understand that you have to uh, aim high when you do an OKR, um, but it's a bit, it's a bit just more difficult when it causes that much friction. I'll figure out how to write that, but that's what, uh, what I have on the top of my head. That's a good one. And I feel like that's a very important one for the past milestone in our terms. Uh, yeah, I feel the pain, um, but I'm if, uh, happy with the amount of help and support we got uh, from you, Lori, from, from Christy, from Jeff, from everyone. So yeah, I think it was a great learning at the end. And I'm happy to see that we are actually coming out with a different process out of that, you know, with uh, with uh, some good lessons learned. Uh, so yeah, that was a great experience. Uh, hopefully we will have, um, you know, a s much more, well, let's say smoother and easier process in the future, but that was a great experience as well. I wish I would be able to, um, that's something I don't know. My, my head is just like so blank. I, I definitely understand your comment, Kayan, right now. I really have to. I feel like there was so much happening, and uh, I don't know. I need to really go back and see what were the, the things that we could improve or uh, highlight specifically. Yeah, I feel like we're doing a lot of great stuff. Um, yeah. We'll probably need to add my thoughts also later, looking back at some things that we've done. Um, the Think Big, uh, the cross stage Think Big was a good thing as well. I think we started this milestone, right? Because we had two sessions, so or last milestone. I don't yeah, know. we do. It, this was second session, and the first session was four weeks ago. Uh, yeah, so it was so like a month ago. Yeah. So uh, that was a good thing, like kicking off um, and figuring out a way to have these conversations across stage, not just between designers, but bringing uh, the product managers to the same room. I think that although, yeah, it's a bumpy road and we're, we have to figure out that we have all these this issues, uh, the blog post that Ian is writing. Um, but when you think big, it's also, I think it's one of those tools and one of those methods that can help other designers as well. And uh, I think once we, we figure out like, okay, this is a good format, it will be nice to, you know, uh, showcase this to to the, the bigger design uh, uh, team at GitLab. So maybe that goes into the, what we can do better, what we improve, I don't know, but it's seen us as verify uh, uh, release designers, uh, showing your faces, you know, putting your faces out there and say, hey, this is how we are, how we are doing um, this great job and this is how we're communicating with the PMs and the teams. I think that uh, it would be nice to highlight this. For sure, good one. And uh, we are in the progress of working on that as well. And actually now I have a good one for uh, something that I've already started a discussion with uh, some of you. I know we talked with Yuhan, we talked with Yuhayana as well in our one-on-ones. Uh, so the something that we could improve on the uh, organizational level, UX organizational level. Um, this is the discussion that coming up uh, with uh, Christy and Sid about our um, a possibility and ability uh, to push uh, stronger on the UX work, on the UX depth, and um, you know, even on, for example, following up on the UX scorecards, on the maturity scorecards, or you know, any UX related work that sometimes I think in other stages, a bit more than in other, we have a little bit of a troubles to like 
push it. And um, this related to that vision that I have in my perfect uh, scenario when a product designer or a UXer is an advisor for PM on areas that we have to look into in order to beat competition in some places or a better um, align to you know like a certain strategy on the business level um, so yeah uh, i think the great channel, uh, challenge for the next uh, milestone will be for us is to figure out how can we do better work there and what are those methods that we could use in order to push like our uh, priorities to the product a bit better and i know that uh, we are working a little bit on uh discussing the ux step right now but also um uh, yeah following up on the ux scorecards we actually want to do i want to create the periscope um chart as well to showcase how much it's actually uh, 24 percent of uh, recommendations only been um uh, completed uh since like nine months i think we have the process already in place and we have been uh, making those calculations with the ux leadership team and it was only 24 uh, percent of the recommendations that been like taken into account so i think this is somewhere where we could do better we could improve better but for that it's like it's a really cross um uh, cross function um uh how do you say work project so yeah this is going to be probably the focus for the next milestone and uh, uh, we will definitely working with you every one of you really close and then also bringing it up to the product um, Nadia do we know why that is that there is such a low percentage of Honestly, Lori, if you would ask me, that probably is, um, well, a lot of that uh, is due to that reason that I feel like um, it was just like hard to push um, those like improvements of the user experience and maybe some maturity improvements versus the new features that that product mm -hmm. managers are like running and they i think like product management and this is very general uh, in many organizations product management see a lot of revenue and value in the new features that they think okay we're gonna add this and suddenly we're gonna have like flow of a lot of users and the revenue will like strike um uh, uh, go straight up which is not which is rarely true, actually, if that, that new feature is not uh, nicely usable or, you know, if that doesn't right. give the proper satisfaction to the user. So it's a really good balance of those two. And I think this is exactly what I'm trying like, to highlight with this point. Like, if we would be able to better articulate the importance of um, not only adding new features, but also, like, making sure that the feature is smooth uh, and provides a nice experience, we would benefit not only as a UX, not only as a product, but as a whole platform and organization. That would be my perspective, but we are, I feel like we are right now running, uh, we are right now in the middle of discussing that. And right now we are adding the labels to the recommendations. Uh, we created this UX uh, scorecard rec label that I will be going and actually adding to every issue uh, for the recommendations so we can make these charts and we can like bring better attention to that, uh, to, you know, to bring more awareness um, and maybe some more results will come out of that on why and how can we improve that. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree on that. And I think too, it's um, the dynamic between product and design. I, I, I get the feeling in the beginning it was product here, do this for me design. I want this to be done go make sure we can get it done. And I feel like it shifted a lot more to being more of a partnership now between at least, at least in the ops group of um, product managers still coming to, to us with like ideas, but not demanding that they get turned into solid designs. It's more of, hey, what do you guys think about this? Let's, let's go find out if that's a thing that we should be doing or can we refine something? So I think it's getting better. I'm hoping. So I'm looking forward to making that percentage higher. <laughs> I agree with you, Lori. Yeah, I think. And I think it's just hopefully it's just going to be going up on that collaboration. I've seen some already great examples in our, in our team of the PM and US collaboration. Uh, kudos to every one of you actually for that. Uh, so, yeah. Um. Going back to your point, Nadia, about 
new features and polish. Um, it, it took me a while at GitLab, right? Because it's very tough to come in here and be like, wait, we're going to do things quickly and we're going to do them fast and they might suck. And that's okay, right? Because that's what we do at GitLab, build things fast and then we iterate on them. Um, it's tempting to go that direction of like we need our features to be more polished but i think that's somewhat anti gitlab -y. i think that exact sentiment is rephrased um, in the gitlab mantra this way mm -hmm. that we can absolutely come out with features that are crappy at first mm -hmm. knowing that we're going to iterate on them and i think that's the key where we've fallen down sometimes is that we don't iterate on things enough we, yeah. we put them out there and say okay this this is the mvc and it is what it is but it's that loop that we go back and that we have to remember that the key to building lots of things fast is that you iterate on them and then yeah. if you don't iterate you just build crappy stuff so I it's agree pushing with you. that iteration part of that i think is a key point Hundred percent, and this is what uh, differentiates GitLab from being like waterfally or you know like when we release fast. But exactly the golden rule here is to iterate, and it it, it again comes back to us like pushing the importance of like coming back in order to make like uh, uh, you know uh, I know a bicycle out of that skateboard or a car out of that skateboard yeah. and um, we have to be really and I feel like in a lot of the stuff here it's our responsibility to constantly bring back PMs and say hey uh, you know we uh, we are not complete there yet or you know uh, like you know to a certain extent so that the experience is complete um I'm not saying perfectly right but to a certain level and uh, some of the tactics there is could be uh, like planning out the full experience with a pm for example uh planning out the whole uh, structure for the future and then assigning the milestones pushing them to put a number there and then every time when we will push away that number you know it we it will get their attention hopefully more without like with those labels like missed uh, mr milestone mr milestone so then um as soon as we put that label or that like timeline there um we could be pushing that a bit but it's, this is going to be constantly on the view that we have to come back and complete that so i think we have to be really good in that like following up and reminder and like pairing up with the pm to make sure that we complete whatever we plan yeah, it's a good point. And, and that's where the trust has to happen is if, you know, it's, it's cool to say like, yeah, we'll do this, but we'll fix it later. Like if we don't, that's when the trust loop gets broken. And that's when designers and PMs start arguing is when, when the we'll fix it later never happens. And yeah, I think that idea of sure, this is it, this is the MVC, but at the same time, like I was in the design file, I actually made the end state as well, and I hear the issues that are gonna get us there, throw them on the board, put milestones on them that are far out there, and then force them to, to deal with that um, and not, not accept like those getting pushed out into infinity is, is the great way to go about that. Yeah, I, th I think so. At least I would be willing to try that. I know that it could be challenging as well, but yeah. Hey everyone, I know that we are a bit over the time. Thanks a lot for this discussion. I enjoyed it a lot. I think there were some great points, topics, and um, yeah, great learnings. So thanks a lot for that. Um, I wish everyone a, a sunny weekend. Uh, hopefully you will find some good tasks for yourself <laughs> to get away from the computer. Don't work over the weekend. And uh, yeah, talk to you next week. Sounds good. Bye everybody. Bye.